Hello again and welcome. This is Robert Shine, Managing Director and Partner of Blanky Shine Wealth Management. Today is Tuesday, the 19th of July of 2022. Markets are moving, so let's get right to our market insights and observations. Thanks for watching. So right now, the S&P is moving a monster rally as we're seeing all across the S&P, the Dow, as well as the NASDAQ. And these are great. In a bear market, which we're in, uh, that means when the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Dow all hit below 20% at some point in time earlier in the year, that means that we're in a technical bear market. Uh, they're also counter trend rallies, meaning the trend year to date is negative for the indices. The counter trend is when markets react uh, greatly to the upside. And a lot of it's short covering because a lot of positioning in Wall Street is to bet that the markets are going to go to lower lows. So that's called a counter trend rally. When you see rallies of anywhere from 500 to 1,000 points in one day, uh, that's what we're experiencing today in today's trading action. Actually, we saw that yesterday as well. When we first opened up, we opened up uh, tremendously uh, a, a huge open, but we actually closed negatively, believe it or not. So we gave all of that back. Now, why would that be? Well, at the end of the day, it's really in a bear market how we close. In fact, in my Cheddar a TV interview yesterday morning on the opening bell. That's exactly what I, I said. We were opening strong. I said, but not a bear market. You want to make certain you've got to pay attention to the daily closes and the Friday closes. We don't accelerate negatively as we close um, towards the end of the day or even into a weekend. Uh, that's not a positive or healthy sign because that means that the buying has evaporated. And that means the bears have taken over. Right now at our current levels, uh, good news as we are trending uh, higher than the 50 day moving average. Now, S&P specifically, watch the S&P 500 index, and it trades in a range. And that kind of gives us an indication if the market's bottoming, if it's healing, or if it's basically setting up for a, basically a turnover because it's not done with a, ultimately the cleansing of a bear market. And that's a transition from a bear to a bull market. Right now, as I stated, uh, the moving averages mean a lot. So the S&P right now, as we film this in the midday, uh, the current level is at 39.30. Again, if you watched my Cheddar report yesterday, in my interview, I said that the S&P uh, moving average on the 50 day is around the 39.22, uh, 24 level. And that's where we are. So we are above the 50 day moving average. Why that's significant is because this is the first, that's why I made it red. We have to close above it and then stay above it for several trading days. If we fade today's rally and we close below the 50 day moving average, that ultimately means that the bears are beating the bulls and that the buying at the end of the day is evaporating. So this is going to be a resistance point. So it's a ceiling on the trading range top uh, on the short term, or it could be a bottom on the if we close above it on the 50 day moving average. So it could be super negative if we close below, or it could be super positive if we start making some constructive high, uh, higher highs or even uh, staying in that trading range around the 50 day moving average. So this is going to be a very important, impactful sort of bull bear fight that's playing out right now. And hopefully we'll see that this rally continues more than just today. Now on the upside, and we can see another 10% higher, um, you know, to the 200 day moving average at 4360. But that's going to take some time, it's going to take some weeks, and maybe even some months into the fall to actually get from here to here. And what you do is you traditionally bounce around these two guardrails. Um, but it takes some time and makes some uh, uh, it takes some work for trading to actually get there. Now, what's actually going to set that up and put a bottom in if we actually turn the tide at some point in time? Well, we're going to listen to second quarter earnings, but more importantly, the guidance, the guidance from the uh, C-level executives, as I say, the CEO, the CFO, all of the earnings reports are going to come out and obviously they're going to beat on the top line. Uh, but the question is, are they going to beat on the bottom line, which is expense management, supply chain management, uh, all the inputs from oil and all the disruptions that we're seeing geopolitically can that corporation or that business manage effectively and efficiently and still navigate sort of the pricing inflation, uh, the price elasticity if they have that with their businesses. Some businesses do and some businesses don't. So that's where you're going to have winners and losers. And that's why you want to basically position
information uh, on some winners and, and sort of weed out the, the losers that are not going to fare well in a recession or any of a bear market. And that's what makes markets. And that's what we're doing for our clients right now. It's an opportunity to upgrade the portfolio and to look at longer term, less than a year, three years, five years down the road. Everything's on sale right now. What do we actually want to own that we didn't have an opportunity to own even two years ago when markets were at all time highs, even a year ago when markets are all time highs. Now we get a second bite at the apple, if you will. And we look at what we want in our portfolio going forward. That's going to do um, really, really in our world, um, add quality to the portfolio. So a like weight of upgrading the portfolio. So that's the S&P levels. That's sort of what we're looking at in terms of the second quarter earnings. What do we have to be concerned about? What's Wall Street concerned about? Well, we did have that rally on Monday morning, uh, uh, midday. Uh, we kind of had that sell-off, and that was uh, from sort of the tech companies talking about sell, uh, laying off or hiring freezes. Uh, again, it's again what I said in my Cheddar report earlier in that morning, which is uh, the tide is turning when we see unemployment uh, sort of tick up. Uh, because we've had you know 40 year lows in employment which is super healthy for the economy but not so good for the federal reserve because they're trying to sort of bring down inflation and wage inflation when there's two job uh, so, sort of openings for every one worker out there. That's what we're at right now. There's wage inflation. There's competition for those employer employers are going after all those employees that are looking for jobs. So that needs to sort of moderate, like the housing needs to moderate a little bit. And we're seeing signs of that. We're going to see consumer confidence as well as home builder index tomorrow. That's what the market's going to be trading on plus or minus as it relates to that. And so real estate's a big, big uh, setup for tomorrow. And even in the meantime, Another thing on the, the radar is what Washington's doing. They have basically a run to the finish line between midterms and for them to actually get any legislation in uh, on the books and, and passed between now and, you know, obviously November is sort of that September 2nd deadline. So what we're hearing about the policymakers, obviously over the weekend, uh, Joe Manchin said, nope, he's not going to uh, basically pass any bills that are in current form and that's why the market gapped up on monday morning uh simply because washington wasn't going to spend any more money right so in washington it doesn't matter if it's red or blue uh basically stock market wants the spending to stop the federal reserve needs the spending to stop if Demo democrats that are in control let's say they hold house and senate or control congress uh, there's another five trillion dollars that's on the docket in their basically purview on their runway if they maintain control to basically get bills in, uh, sort of passed and they will have the political sort of uh, numbers to do that now betting odds and actually what we've probably seen is we're definitely gonna have a divided congress that's our belief here at blanky shine wealth management we could even see both House and Senate both go red, uh, which means at the end of the day, a divided Congress or basically a stalemate. Um, and so you're not going to see that $5 trillion of spend because that $10 trillion that we spent over the last basically 36 months is part of the inflation story. And we don't need our goods and services. Again, that's the definition, right? Too many uh, too, too much dollars, too many dollars uh, chasing too few goods and services. That's the essential supply and demand and inflation story. So we can't have more gasoline to a fire. Uh, that's just not going to bode well for the economy. It's not going to bode well for the consumer because let's face it, for everyone on their kitchen table, right? Kitchen table economics 101, as I always talk about, uh, it's ultimately what you and I spend money on. If those goods and services are, are, are going up, uh, we have less. That's the number one regressive tax. Uh, that's the worst tax that you could actually pass on to an economy that you're trying to maintain price stability, you're maintaining growth, and you're maintaining equality at all spectrums. That's ultimately what the, the idea would be here. So you do not want inflation. So we can't have any more spending. But right now that we have to pay attention because there is, even though Senator Joe Manchin is in sort of, you know, uh, sort of stopping what current legislation is, he is open for discussion. So that means anything can happen. There's COVID relief uh, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 discussed. There's also climate change versus fossil fuel moderating on the com climate change conversation, potentially moderating on the, the fossil fuel sort of um, oversight uh, to, to ease uh, maybe uh, pa you know, pain at the pumps potentially. These are all things that are being um, uh, circulated in Washington, according to the lobbyists and, and the research that we're reading. Of course, Joe Manchin is not going to vote for anything that doesn't have a reconciliation in it, as well as drug prices and Obamacare sort of, uh, you know, they're, they're going to talk about how they can handle health care in this bill as well. So 
everything is evolving it's real time as we saw right this weekend joe manchin says he's not on board and the markets jump higher so let's see if we can one maintain our moving averages above the 50 day and close stay and sort of make some more quality progress on the indices themselves too what's going to keep us there are the guidance from corporate america and how uh, companies are reporting and how they fared in the second quarter and how they're going to guide in this current third quarter and then finally washington what the evolution is in terms of any more spending potentially uh, i don't think the market's going to like it e even if it's um you know even if it's it's a moderate package if you will at best so we can't have too much more spending if not at all because that's not going to help the inflation story Overall, the economy, the consumer, both businesses, small businesses, and everyone in between. So that's the update for today. That's what we're paying attention to. Markets are as well. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.